We're here this morning with Ben Carroll, who has a profile on findaguitarteacher.com and who teaches online via Skype. Good morning, Ben. Thanks for being with us today. Good morning, James. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, first of all, uh, um, you mentioned that you teach exclusively on Skype. Can you describe a little bit more your lessons and how people can get in touch with you who would like lessons? Yeah, absolutely. I've actually, uh, I've been exclusively teaching on Skype. I started teaching on Skype in 2008. Uh, so I've been teaching on Skype a while and I switched to exclusively teaching on Skype in uh, 2009, I believe. Uh, wow. After I, uh, I'd, I'd been living in more of a, uh, I'd, living, I'd been living in a city and I decided to, uh, to escape <laughs> and, and yes. move up north to Maine where I am now. But in doing so, I, I, was, I knew I was going to be cutting myself off from, from a lot of potential students. So I started teaching on Skype. And uh, it's, it's wonderful. And I, I switched to it exclusively on Skype because it, it's so easy. I, um, plus, once I moved up here, I didn't have the, the, the amazing lesson space I had before. And rather than trying yes. to find something to set it back up, I decided just to do Skype. And it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful because worldwide reach. I've, I've taught, I've had students all over the U.S. and Canada, but also in Australia, uh, Europe, and uh, the Middle East. That, that's wonderful. It, it really gives you amazing options, doesn't it? It does. It yeah. does. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the, the people who contact you for lessons? Do you teach both adults and children? I do. I do teach both adults and children. Um, I teach mostly adults, um, yes. but I've, I've, had, I've had a good number of kids as well, as young as, I think the youngest student I ever had was eight, but that's definitely the youngest. Most, most of the younger kids are in their you know, 12 to early teens. But I'd say a good portion of my students are in their um, late teens, early 20s, and also an, uh, an age jump to uh, people in their 40s and 50s. Certainly. And uh, when people contact you for lessons, are there particular styles that you find that they're asking for most? Yeah, yeah. With me, um, I get mostly students that are interested in rock and classic rock because... Yeah. Uh, because of my background, I was, I've been in uh, some some bands that have done fairly well. I, I, I'm in a band called Ra that, that um, we've got eight albums out. We were on Universal for years and had you know radio success, songs in movies, songs in video games. So um, that definitely not I wouldn't say kitty corners me, but it it, uh, it puts me in a position where I get a lot more students looking to learn rock music than than the other style. But you know I do teach. Um, blues and uh, yes. in other styles as well, because I love it. <laughs> and, and there are so many good styles of music out there. And yes, I noticed on your website that there are releases by Raw, and is another one of your projects called The Hollow Glow, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a band I actually sing and play guitar in. Got it. Trio. And is Raw more of an instrumental group? No, no, Ra oh, is, okay. Ra is a, um, a melodic hard rock band. Got it. And uh, I asked because you mentioned with the Hollow Glow, you said I sing and play guitar. With Raw, do you just play guitar, or do you also? Yeah, sing? Ra, I'm I'm not the lead vocalist. I I, uh, I I play guitar. I'm the lead guitarist, but I, I sing background vocals. Excellent. And mm -hmm. uh, and I I notice you have quite a few guitars there with you, and it sounds like the music okay. that you perform with is, is certainly a more electric guitar based. Do you also teach acoustic guitar? I see a very nice acoustic guitar behind your right shoulder. I do, I do. I I love I love acoustic guitars. These days, I probably play more when you know when I'm playing for fun. I probably play more acoustic than electrics, I, but uh, I do teach both. Yeah, and uh, a nice acoustic is hard to beat when you're just uh, sitting on your yeah. own. Yeah. Uh, well, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the logistics of your lessons? Uh, how often do you teach students, and how long are the lessons? Um. I, uh, most of my students are, are weekly students. Um, I do occasionally take on bi-weekly bi students if, if uh, yes. you know, money can be tight. Right. Sometimes, sometimes people just prefer that. But the weekly students seem to keep the flow going, which, which keep things rolling and keep the progress moving a little bit quicker. And I teach um, three lesson lengths. I teach 45, uh, sorry, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and 60 minutes. And what are your fees for the three lengths of lessons? For 30 minutes, I, I charge $40. For 45 minutes, I charge $45. And for 60 minutes, I charge $60. So 
So it's not that expensive. It's actually fairly comparable to what most places charge. No, I, I'd say that that seems like uh, a very good pricing uh, schedule and uh, something that people should take advantage of. Yeah, and lessons lessons are, you know, I, I don't make people pay by the month or anything like that. I know a lot of studios do that, but I just do right. it lesson by lesson. And as long as someone gives me 48 hours notice, I'm, I'm fairly... Um, I'm fairly flexible when I can be with, with rescheduling and whatnot. Yes. Well, I'm sure doing things the way you do on Skype uh, from the one location uh, it makes it a little bit easier with the scheduling to move things around than it might be if you were traveling to different places. It does. Yeah. It does. One well, of the perks of being on Skype. Exactly. Well, uh, can you tell us, uh, you've mentioned uh, your your bands Raw and the Hollow Glow, and, and you've mentioned... Uh, uh, your history in, in recording music and performances. Can you tell us a little bit about your background, uh, both recording and performing, but also how did you get into guitar and how did you start to learn guitar? Sure. I guess I'll start in the beginning. I um, started playing guitar when I was 11 just because I, I grew up in a house with a lot of music. Listened. My, my dad always had Led Zeppelin or Jimi Hendrix yes. or The Doors or, you know, Classic rock. I, I, to this day, I still love classic rock and probably listen to that more than anything else. And uh, I started with music when I was really young. I actually asked my parents for piano lessons, I think, when I was, I don't even remember the exact age, but I, I was pretty young in the single digits. Wow. <laughs> and then, then you know, dis discovered, um, discovered the, the wonders of the electric guitar when I, was, when I was 11 and begged my parents to get me a guitar yes. and started, you know, working at the guitar uh, for years, and, and then um, when I was 17, I started at Berklee College of Music in Boston. Yes. And went there for a while. I, I also I also moved out to L.A. for a little while and went to M.I. for a little bit, and then I went back to Berkeley. And then uh, because, and I actually also went to another school in between. I was, I was jumping around, having fun. Yes. Um, and getting a lot out of it. But uh, at that time, all, a lot of bands started breaking out of Boston. Godsmack and Power Man 5000 and Stained. And I decided that I would uh, take a little time off from college to try to get a band rolling. And if it didn't work out, I'd, I'd you know, go back in a couple of years. But right. I'm getting a deal with Universal Records. And next thing you know, it's, it's 15 years later. <laughs> it goes quick. Yeah, I remember that time in Boston. There were quite a few bands really breaking from that location in a very short amount of time. Mm. And, and so that was uh, your band Raw that you formed at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's wonderful. And with uh, Raw and, uh, I'm sorry, it was the Hollow Glow is the, yeah, the Hollow project. Glow. Are both of those bands still performing now? Do you still uh, go on the road with them and record? Or are they uh, more uh, past projects at this point? Uh, well, Roz, Roz definitely still a band. Although yes. we, we, you know, we did a we did a tour in the spring and uh, winter in the spring of of, of two thousand fourteen. Wonderful. But we definitely don't tour nearly as much as we used to. You know, I spent years of my life on the road, which, which when you're in your twenties is great. But yes. it, it gets it gets old. You know, it's not like we ever traveled in luxury. You know, we weren't right. we weren't flying on Lear jets and, and staying in four star hotels. You know, we were traveling, traveling in, on uh, nice tour buses, but, you know, when you do that for, for a year straight, it, it wears you down. And, you know, as you get a little bit older, you start to really enjoy waking up in the same bed every day. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't tour as much as I used to, and, right. but Rod's still a band. We actually had, we um, just released an acoustic EP, and we actually have a, um, a, a deluxe edition version of our last album, Critical Mass, which came out in uh, October of of 2013 a year ago that wow. the works finishing up some of the unfinished songs for that and uh, the hollow glow is no longer a band it was a trio yes but um yeah that that ended up not working out but i'm 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 performing mostly as a solo artist these days when i do perform out just just locally for fun because i like to get out and play for people just myself my Very voice cool. and acoustic guitar yeah that that's Thank wonderful you. uh and as with so many people quite a, a wide-ranging musical journey you've been on yeah, it's, it's been fun. I've, I've done Ron the Hollow Glow, and I have instrumental albums out, and uh, I also record um, with another band called Half Past My Sin, which has Jason Bittner from Shadows Fall on drums, who is yeah, amazing, which is why I'm involved in that project. And we just uh, we're just 
getting ready to track another album with that band. That's that's wonderful. And uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, one was about uh, your teaching, where obviously you compose a lot of music. Uh, is, and I was wondering, in your teaching, do you incorporate your own music into what you're showing students? Um, well, I mean, I, I write all... Um, 90% or more of the curriculum that I work with. So in that sense, yes. Awesome. yes. And I do have students that come to me that want to learn raw songs. Um, oh, that's very cool. Which, uh, which I, I do occasionally. Um, but, and, and actually, so songwriting itself is, is something that some students come to me to work on, of too. Of course. Mm. Of course. And, and I was wondering, my other question was going back to what you were talking about in terms of uh, when you started to feel interested in the guitar, and you said the electric guitar really hit you at age 11. And I was wondering if there was any particular guitarist or album that kind of washed over you like electric guitars for me, or was it just something that a lot of things came together at once? Well, it was, it was absolutely um, what, what inspired me. It, there's, there's two different things that happened. What inspired me to yeah. want to play electric guitar was, you know, when I was, when I was 11 years old, I discovered Motley Crue and I was like, wow, this is amazing. So got I got it. an electric guitar, but I, had it, I didn't really start practicing a lot till I was 13 or 14. And that's yeah. actually when I discovered um, Steve Vai and Joe Satriani and that, that, you know, that everything. Those, you know, I, just, I discovered instrument, instrumental music and it just, uh, right. that, that's what made me start practicing. That, that's like, yeah, that's wonderful. Once you discover those two, you're off and running for a long time. Yeah. Well, very cool. It would it would be awesome then to hear you play some guitar. Uh, 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 would you like to play something either on the electric you're holding or on one of the other guitars? It could be something you would play with a student or just something that you'd like to play if you were sitting down on your own. But it would be great to hear your your playing. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, what I'll do is I guess I'll, I'll just play a bit of a raw song and um, talk about where some of that comes from, too. Of course. Uh, this, this is uh, a song called Fallen Angels. It's, it's a, uh, it was the, the first single off our second album. And, and maybe before you start playing, could you roll the chair back just a little bit so we'll oh, be absolutely. able to... Yeah, yeah, yeah so, That'll be perfect. Now I can right. see both your hands. Yeah. Sure. And uh, I, I tend to use those those wide chords a lot with Ra. I, I, I love those chords, which actually I, I got from Andy Summers. Oh, okay. Harris for the police, who's, who's amazing. But, you know, those chords come directly from... Oh. Which, which everybody cool. recognizes. Uh, of course. Yeah, I was thinking that uh, when you played the, the Ra riff, that... Uh, you're you're playing chords on the guitar, but it almost has like an open tuning sound to it. Mm, uh, cool, I, yeah, well, I, yeah. I tend to use a lot of uh, a lot of sus chords and, okay, and play around with the harmony a bit. I, I'm a, I'm a lover of harmony, which I, is it's hard to get away with in rock music. Sometimes, you know, I spend a lot of time playing hard rock music. Yeah, um, it's hard to get away with extended harmony in uh, in heavier rock music because. Um, of the the distortion, it kind of it kind of ends up getting muddied. But when right. you, you know the the, uh, the sus tunings and the wider chords allow that to carry through a little bit a little bit easier. Very cool. Well, could you play a little bit more? That was great to hear at the beginning of that raw song. Uh, is there anything else you could play? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of one of the um, one of the concepts I have that I teach. Uh, for, for rock music, I, I, I always tell my students that for rock music, there's really only uh, three different rhythm styles. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, you have, you have your strumming kind of stuff. And you have the downstroke. And then you have the kind of stuff where you're, you're picking through. And um, I have... Uh, that, that's, that's usually... If, I, if, if I'm working with a student, it's not a, a straight-up beginner. I usually start with, with, with as the first lesson with that concept and we start going over, um, we start with the chord progression and we go over that chord progression in, in multiple styles. Uh, um, the, the chord progression I, I always use for the first lesson is just... You know, we play through it strum strumming and talk about how keeping the hand moving when you're strumming is 
Right. That pendulum action is extremely important to, to keep you in time. And then, you know, we move on to playing it with, with uh, power chords mm -hmm. or full-on bar chords. <laughs> Picking through a simpler pattern, and then you know, working our way up to doing it with something a little bit more complicated. And yeah, so that's that's generally where I where I start with most students, and then I just branch out from there to take it wherever their interests lie and wherever their with their, wherever their ability wants to take them. That, that's wonderful, Ben. And, and and I recognize what you were just describing from your Find a Guitar Teacher profile. You mentioned in the first lesson that you would take the same chord progression and, and do it in various rhythm styles. So it's great mm -hmm. to hear you demonstrate that. And, and it strikes me how it, it's a reminder, like I'm sure you might have students who would hear you play those three different things and, and go, oh my God, he's playing three different songs. Yeah, yeah well, it's the same chord progression. You know, there's a there's a lot of a lot of songwriting tools there too. Exactly, uh, and uh, how to write with one or the other, what sounds good, uh, and it, it's wonderful to hear you demonstrate that because you can take that so far, and that's just one chord progression, and then you start applying yeah. other chords and other progressions. Uh, it's really endless, and and that's what's great about music. It is endless. Yep, absolutely. Well, I, I wanted to ask you uh, about. Uh, it's probably a little different situation for you since you teach on Skype exclusively, but, but students are interested in buying new equipment, especially mm -hmm. new guitars. And I was wondering, do you offer guidance to your students about uh, buying new guitars? I do. I do, yeah. A, a lot of times when, when a student's looking at new gear, they, they always ask me questions. So, yeah, I, I absolutely help with that. And uh, you obviously, with a lot of recording experience, do you have students who are interested in recording themselves, and can you help them uh, learn how to use the the uh, state of the art recording equipment? Yeah, yeah, students um, students that have the equipment, I definitely if if they're if they're if they're willing and wanting, I, I put them I put them to work incorporating recording into into the lessons because you know these days as a musician. It's it's really not enough to just have the skills of your instrument any, anymore. The technology is so readily available. It's almost expected, you know, when you get into a, a situation where you're working with other musicians. <clears throat> excuse me. Sure. It's almost expected that that you know how to uh, to record some tracks by yourself and uh, and pass those tracks on or put together demos or or any of that kind of stuff and it's it's getting easier and easier as technology advances it really is and you make a good point that uh, about it almost being expected at this point that you'll know your way around the the recording equipment as well as well as around your instrument uh that that's very mm -hmm. well said I, I hadn't thought about it that way but that is so true yeah, and a lot of you know a lot of kids these days grew up with so much technology that it's it's not it's it's not really a stretch for them. They you know they they get That's it. That's right, exactly. Well, Ben Carroll, I want to thank you. We're going to wrap up the interview in a second, but this has been wonderful to learn more about your guitar teaching and about your uh, past history in the music business. Also, more about how you learn guitar and how you became interested in music. It's great to learn all these things, and want to wish you best of luck in this. Uh, this venture where you're teaching exclusively on Skype, which you've done for quite a while. So obviously uh, it's going very well for you. Yeah, it's very nice. And, and thank you so much for having me. I, I, I love what you guys have going on at FindingGuitarTeacher.com. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Thank you so much, Ben. And, and it's great to have you be part of it. Uh, and we look forward to having more and more teachers uh, join the site. But in the meantime, best of luck to you. And, and we do look forward to seeing you on Find a Guitar Teacher. Hope you have a good day. Thank you. You too. Okay. Thanks, Ben. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.